Welcome to the Bourbon Van. I'm Phil. I'm Julie, and we're going to get lost in a four bottle of wine today. We haven't done a four bottle blind in forever. I think summertime, maybe. The last bottle that we purchased of 2021 was this Four Roses limited edition bottle. The next bottle we bought, the first bottle of 2022, barrel another limited edition bottle. I don't know that we even have anything else on the shelf that is titled limited edition. So this is very unusual for us. Four Roses limited edition barrel strength. This one sells for $160, at least that's what we got it for. I like this one because they say it's bottle 12,871 out of 14,880. You know, it's pretty Very special. Exciting. You get it, right? On the other hand, we have Barrel Bourbon, the New Year Cask Strength 2022. This is a limited New Year edition bourbon whiskey, bottle number 16,654. We don't know how many there were, though. <laughs> the only number that I could find online suggested that there were 2,500 released, so we know that's not right. Unless <laughs> our bottle is a real outlier. Um, but real quickly, we're going to go through these two bottles, talk some statistics, and then we're going to introduce two new bottles because it's not enough that we would blind taste two limited edition whiskeys. We're going to put them up against two whiskeys from their brand lines that are considerably cheaper. We're going to blind all four of them. Four roses here, uh, $160 bottle. Uh, 57.1, what is that, 114.2 proof? Good. This is the 2021 small batch release, barrel strength, and uh, there's a ton of information on this one online. Actually, Jason from Mash and Drum did a great review. There's a lot that went into this one, different yeast strains and all that sort of stuff, but uh, high proof, limited edition, that's what matters right here. Next up, we've got this barrel bourbon New Year cask strength. This one is 115.34 proof. The unique thing about this one, distilled in Tennessee, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Wyoming, New York, and Texas. Getting them all. We're getting them all. <laughs> Honestly, that that is an extreme blend. That is so yeah. many states. That's really wild. So Is uh, it too many? That's what I think we're gonna find out. Yeah. And now let's introduce the more affordable bottles that are somewhat more readily available here. At least they don't say limited edition on them. From the Four Roses line, we're doing this single barrel, barrel strength bottle, the OBSV yeast strain, the Oregon pick from 2020. This is the one that did really, really well in our Advent tournament this year and was a surprise. We didn't expect it. That one is 59.4%. What is that, 118.8? Yeah. Proof? Okay. So 114, 115, 118. And lastly, we're going to put Stellum Bourbon in here, produced by Barrel Spirits. It's 114.98 proof. We got it for $55. And this one is distilled in Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. So the two Four Roses bottles are localized specifically to Four Roses Distillery. The barrel and the stellum are blends from kind of a lot of different places. This is our first barrel that we've purchased. We've yep. had lots of samples of it. And it's always one of those, if I can't figure out where it's from, it's probably barrel. So who knows what this one's gonna taste like? We're gonna nose the glasses, we are going to sip from one side to the other, and then all the way back, a little A-B testing, and we'll show you bits and pieces of that, not the entire thing, otherwise it would be a really long video. Let's start with those noses. Here we go. I got Intense. a nice oak presence, a little vanilla in there. I had mostly vanilla, maybe some orange peel. Like a hint of a little floral in there too, in that glass one. I believe it. So on to glass two. Ooh, I like this nose. Mm. A hint of banana, but like a super ripe banana. Yeah, almost like a banana dessert, yeah. more like a uh, pudding or a mm -hmm. creme brulee or something like that. That's nice. It is almost creamy. Number three? I had no idea what I'm smelling there. Oh, all three noses smell different. I mean, I suppose they should. Quite different. This has almost a cidery smell to it. I'd agree with that. Baked cinnamon apples or something. Mm -hmm. four. Number four? Ooh, big nose on this one. Brown sugar. More fruit, too. Lots of fruit. Yeah, it's almost like... But they're like, like white fruits, so I'm thinking, I don't know if that's weird, because I guess apple, well, I guess depending on which one, but like a pear, I was, I was thinking apple, pear. yeah. Yeah, maybe a hint of cherry there too. There's a lot happening here. It's like a fruit cup. Mm-hmm. The noses are nice. The no, noses are nice. No complaints of the nose. <laughs> well, Let's get on to the, the fun stuff. Right on, here we go. <laughs> Glass number one. Cheers. Cheers. Hey! Ooh, it's warm. That's my first sip of the day. Ooh, lo oh, what lovely. What a great way to start. Yeah, so oaky. 
Oh, so sh like brown sugary. The mouth feels great. It's giving me something oh. to think about. I'm just like, I'm just like putting my tongue on the roof of my mouth. Oh, mama likes. This <laughs> one's good. <laughs> wow. What a reaction. Yeah. I will also say that I said it's the first whiskey of the night, but I actually have not had a sip of whiskey in probably five or six days. So this wow. is like my first sip of whiskey in a while. Look at you. Yeah. I'm going to have, I'm going back for another sip. I, yeah. Great. I was wondering if I was allowed to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a redder fruit on that too. Yeah. I completely agree. I, it's somewhere between like a strawberry and a candied cherry. Maybe, you know what? Mm. Scratch that cherry thing. I th that's a raspberry. Oh, Scratch yeah, all no, that. I, that's a raspberry. Yeah, I don't think it's a cherry. Yeah. Oh, I think this glass of what is fantastic. I completely agree. Whatever this what is, it's What if it's the That would be awesome. That'd be great. <laughs> you ready for glass two? I'm pumped. Here we go. <laughs> Ooh, cinnamon. Oh, yeah. A cinnamon fruit. Ooh, that one's nice too. <laughs> that's really good. It's not as pleasant. It's different. It's totally different than the glass number very, one. Very, I mean, very, very different. different. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Mm. That one isn't. I keep doing that. Mm. But that has a nice cinnamon sweetness. I dark, like that. Dark, rich, really dark brown sugar, lots of oak, maybe even some black licorice. Oh. This one does have a little bit of the, um, I was called the nose bite, where kind of <laughs> the heat kind of comes back through your nose. Ooh, that one's warm, though. It is warm. That one feels warm. Okay. Glass oh, you're three. ready? You're I'm already ready. on it. I'm Here on we it. go. Oh my gosh, they all taste so different. This one does taste like sugar apples with a sprinkle of perfume. I would agree on the perfume. Red licorice instead of black this time. Mm. How appetizing does that? Uh, your grandmother gives you a bowl of sugared apples because for some reason we put sugar on everything. Sugar apples with a sprinkle of her perfume on it. <laughs> Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> Your perfume note is, is spot on with this one. Mm. There's something almost artificial tasting in this one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was just gonna I, say circus peanuts. I don't dislike it, but this one I think is a, right off the bat, is my least favorite of the ones. Yeah, I, I would agree. I don't dislike it either. It just, those first two were just really great. Yeah. I have to think about if I, if I like this one or if I don't. I'm just gonna keep sipping it until it tells me. Yeah. You let me know. All right, I'm ready for four. Glass four. I'm, these are all very delicious. I'm having a great time. Let's see if we're having a great time after we go back the other direction, an A-B test, and yeah. have had way too much whiskey in the night. Mm -hmm. It's another one of those standout whiskeys. The finish, actually, of this one is overwhelming the others. These are a lot of high-proof whiskeys with lingering finishes. You know, taking a break in between to let our palate reset, it's tough for them to totally reset. Glass number four, that pears, uh, that canned pears and juice, that sugary mm -hmm. slurry of goodness, that's all over the finish here. That's all I'm getting. This is another one I'm not sure about. I'm not sure if I like this one. Hmm. I'm anxious to go, I actually am very anxious to go back to glass one and two because I like them so much. I mm -hmm. wonder if they'll disappoint on the way back. I mean, that is a possibility. I think that uh, glass number four here, I think the mouth feels terrific. Mm -hmm. If I had to guess, I would say that this one maybe is the product of multiple distilleries. It's, it's yeah. a touch disjointed. I get different things at different times. The only overarching flavor that sticks around is that pear. I will say that you said it's disjointed and that is exactly, maybe just the flavors aren't super cohesive in number four. And so it's kind of throwing me off. Well, the leather is fleeting. The orange peel is fleeting. Even the little bit of oak wood and vanilla that you yeah. get. The vanilla sticks around a little bit, but it changes. It's a nice ride. I don't dislike this one, actually. I think that this is a really interesting whiskey with a lot to to dig into and work through. Mm -hmm. But I do think that it's just a touch disjointed. That might be because we haven't spent much time with it. Right. And it could just be because we got to go back the other direction here. Yeah. If we'd started with this one, I wonder if we'd say the same things. There's a lot of flavors. Just not sure if they're all working together. So I'm going to take one last baby sip because I don't have a lot of glass four left because it has perplexed me so much. I'm going to take a baby Same. sip of that and then I'm going to head back the other way because that's really where I feel like the glasses shine. Let's go for it. Yeah. I still stick by the finish is the is a lacking in this well, one. It's, it's a little, the other one. It's a little bitter on the finish too. Yeah. I'm going to do the balance where I have the cat and the book and the thing. Glass two? Let's do it. He said while raising it to his lips. I know. And these were the ones I was excited about. Let's see if I'm still excited about them. Ooh. 
I'm a big fan of Blast Number Two. Man, there's some like nice cigar on that now. Mmm, but like great oak finish. Ooh, I like this one. <laughs> this one, this one's really good. I'm just sitting with it, just enjoying the flavors because they just keep coming. Yeah. And the finish, it's big. It's a big finish. It is a big finish. From top to bottom, it's decadent. This this glass is really Ooh, good. I like that decadent. It's a, it's a nice pour, whatever this is. I do uh, a bit wonder too how we're like a year and a half into this, or I am into my uh, bourbon slash whiskey journey. So maybe I. Just looking for more flavors Look here. at you. You've come of age. I still want everything to cost like $30, though. <laughs> of course. All right, I'm going into number one. I'm excited. But here we go. Very sugary. Oh, my goodness. Does this smell great all of a sudden? So much oak. The fin uh, Seriously, the finish on this one is crazy. What I like about this one is that I'm getting like a plum, mm. which I haven't mentioned yet. There's some orange in here. Not like candied orange or anything like that. Like yeah. actual like mandarin orange juice. Mmm, this one's really good. The mouthfeel on this one, I think, is the best of the bunch. For the finish alone, it could win. I, I, I completely agree. I actually, glass number one, whatever it is, when we're done, I want to get some candied bacon. And I want to pair this bourbon with candied bacon. Can we put it on French stuff. toast and some syrup? I mean, now you're just going crazy and I like it. I'm into all that. Yeah. That's mighty good. Yeah. That's better than super good. It's mighty good. Mighty good. good. I can't, you're in the way. <laughs> I need to do stuff. So next up we will A-B test, followed immediately by pairing these with candied bacon and fresh toast. Ooh, I actually was thinking about making fresh toast for dinner, so there you go. I don't have any bacon, not to run out. I can do that. <laughs> Glass four is just a pear party. It's, it's a party with pears. Mm. I don't know who does that. I don't know what sort of party y'all are having out there with pears, but if you're having a pear party, let us know. What are you doing? Mm. Man, that number, glass number one, is a home run. I agree. Give me a baseball cap. Give me a Louisville slugger. Put me in, coach. Put me in, coach. I want it. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> glass two is great. I marked on the nose initially inviting. I stand by it. Do you? I feel invited. Oh, welcome. <laughs> Drink me. I don't know what any of these are. Mm -hmm. But I do know that whatever glass one and two are, they are light years ahead of class three and four. Really? Even when it's easy, it's hard. For the pair note alone, glass number four is one of the more interesting things that I've had this year. Granted, <clears throat> it's only the 11. Okay, I'm ready. I've drank them all down. Okay, let's start with fourth place. What do you got? All right, so fourth place, I have my glass number three. Same as me. Oh. -oh. That's glass B for me. Is that glass B for you? Yeah. The reason I picked it, I said I liked the flavors, but there was not much to talk about. It didn't strike me as being... Oh! <laughs> no, Armin, quit, <laughs> quit trying to be part of the show. Glass B didn't particularly wow either of us, and it wasn't all that interesting. I don't know if there's more that can be said about it. We didn't dislike it. It just wasn't that great. Yeah, I agree. Not super surprised here. That was... The Stellum Bourbon, ah, the okay. cheapest one. It was fifty-five dollar bottle. In this competition, didn't really hold a it candle. It did have st stiff competition. Yeah, it didn't. One. It didn't hold up. We, we yeah. hoped that it would do better than it did. What is your third place? My third place is glass number four. Okay. It's not my favorite on the table, but it deserves a higher spot than number three. It was a little disjointed, yes, but. It was interesting enough that I put it in number two. That's second place for me. I've got that as glass C. Is that what you've got? I have glass C. Wow. Okay. <gasps> barrel okay. New Year. You put that so, in third. So the barrel is the, as a brand is out for you. Three to four, four for me. I, I think it's interesting. I think that that pair note is great. And I'm really interested actually. Mm -hmm. Bottles change as you as you drink them down a little bit. I think a little oxygen in this one is going to do it some good. I do think though that the blending, as expertly as they do it and as good as it is, I just think that blends don't really hit our palates perfectly and that's what we're seeing here, so. Let's talk second place. And for me, it's glass number two. That was my third place. Oh, good, we did swap, okay. What do we got here? I have letter A. Letter A, four roses. The single barrel barrel strength Oregon OBSV pick from 2020. That's fascinating I, because it's a very good whiskey. The only reason that I didn't put it in second mm -hmm. was because it wasn't as 
interesting or unique, I should say, it was a little bit boring. Not to say that I didn't like it because I really did. It just didn't, it wasn't as exciting. This was more straightforward with their flavors and the finish was lovely. I liked it. I can see why you'd be intrigued though with that glass number four. So that leaves <gasps> number one for both of us. I'm- Glass one, letter D. Letter D. Four Roses Barrel Strength Limited Edition. How about that? I want to say that it was tough. It wasn't. But from that first sip, I was like, dang. <laughs> kind of from the nose, I, honestly. And I, I didn't want to say it. Like, the first time you nose a glass on a yeah. day when you haven't had anything to drink yet, it always smells good. But this smelled extra good. And when we went all the way down to one side and all the way back, yeah, it still stood out. I have to say, of the 100 plus dollar bottles that we've purchased, this is the first one that's made me say, yep. okay, I get it, I get yeah. that, it makes sense. By the way, it was the last one that I sipped and there's so much plum, like juicy plum on the finish still lingering. I know, I feel like I'm gushing and I probably am. And sure. I'm a Four Roses fan. Plum flavored gushers. I know, cause Four, <laughs> gross, <laughs> but. <laughs> well, have you had the chance to try these whiskeys? What do you think of them? Do you think that they're worth the price, we know there's a boatload of you that are gonna say 160, that's crazy to spend on a bottle of whiskey. I am definitely one of those people that say that. And in this instance, I would retract that and say, grab it. Let us know, have you tried these two whiskeys? Have you tried these two whiskeys? In this four bottle blind, which would be your favorite? And if you had to choose, if you said, I've got $160, am I buying two bottles of barrel or one bottle of Four Roses? There's a Sophie's Choice for you, I guess. As always, thanks for joining us and from wherever we are. To wherever you are. Cheers. Cheers. Listen to your whiskey. Delicious.